If you're a 3D artist, you have no doubt seen the power of ChatGPT for other applications and probably wondered how you could leverage ChatGPT to improve your Maya workflow. In this tutorial, I am going to show you a brief overview of how you can use ChatGPT to help you code some automation to speed up repetitive tasks. This is not meant to be a demonstration of how to use ChatGPT to solve every problem in Maya, but rather it is an example of the thinking process you can use to engage with ChatGPT without ever having to write a single line of code yourself. So for the example that I have here, this is a motion capture example. It's just some motion capture markers that are moving through space. You can see the form of the body there. And for this example, let's just imagine that what we want to do is that at the location of these markers, we want to attach a sphere, something really simple, a polygon sphere, right? And there's our polygon sphere. Let's scale it down a little bit. And if we wanted to attach this at any given point, you know, we could create a, a you know, a point constraint if we wanted, uh, pop into our rigging menu set, constrain, point, and there it goes. So it would constrain on there and it would follow around. Very simple, very straightforward. If we wanted to attach that sphere to each one of these markers, however, we'd have to create a bunch of duplicates, right? Let's say, I don't know how many markers there are here, probably about 40 or so. And therefore I'd have to do this about 40 times, duplicate it out a bunch of times, and then each time I'd have to just point constrain it. Well, anything that starts to become a repetitive task is usually a sign in my brain that I could get some code to help me do that. Now, the question is, will it take me longer to write that code than it will to do the task? Usually the answer is yes, it will take me longer to write the code. <laughs> However, if it is a task that I know I am going to perhaps uh, repeat multiple times, then having some code there to, to use, to continually use over and over again, each time I want to I don't know, iterate or change what I've done uh, or apply it to a new scenario, for instance, that could start saving me some serious time. So in this situation here, it's very simple. Um, I popped over to ChatGPT to come up with a particular scenario that I wanted to follow. So here in ChatGPT, I've written out the following. In Maya, assume I have a series of 10 locators throughout the scene. I, it's more than 10, obviously, but I just gave some grounding for ChatGPT to understand. So assume I have a series of 10 locators throughout the scene. I want to constrain a sphere to each of these locators. Each sphere will be identical in size. Is there a way to automate constraining spheres to these locators without having to duplicate the sphere nine times and individually constrain each sphere to a single locator? And so what it does, I didn't even ask it to write code, but I knew that it would probably would write some code if I asked this question. I could have been more specific. I could have said, write me some Mel code or some Python script that would uh, create this as well. And so what it did was it generated a Python script for us. Now, the important thing here is I did not read through this script. I just took it blindly. Anybody who's a coder out there would probably say that's a bad idea. But for the sake of example, for people out there who don't know how to code, let's just assume you take it blindly. So I'm just going to copy this script that ChatGPT gave us. And let's see what happens when we put it here into our script editor. So I'm just going to click on the script editor icon here down on the bottom right corner of my Maya window. And this is a Python script, so I have to make sure that I'm putting it into a Python tab. So I'm gonna click on the new tab here, choose Python, and I'm gonna paste it in, all right? And now I'm just gonna hit Control A to select all the script, Control Enter to run it. All right, and it says constrain 46 spheres to locators. Oh, okay, cool. Well, it, it did what I asked. <laughs> it put spheres on locators, but, um, it's not, the, it's not that sphere, I can tell. It's not the right size. And then if I look over here in my outliner, I can also tell that um, this is a polygon sphere. These, by their icon, and I can also tell by the way that they're visually represented here inside of the viewport, these are NURBS spheres, right? So the difference between our polygon spheres and our NURBS spheres. That means that this isn't quite doing what I want it to do, but it's a start. 
So I'm just going to go through. I'm going to find all the spheres that are created here and just delete them. All right, we're back to where we were to begin with. So I know now that it's kind of working, but I don't want it to just generate random spheres. I want it to generate a copy of this sphere that I have here in the viewport on each one of these locators. That's an important element to what I'm doing here. All right, so I go back in here and I say, um, this code uh, parents NURB spheres to the locators. However, I want a polygon sphere to be parented to each locator. Specifically, I want it to be a duplicate of the polygon sphere whose scale I have already defined in the viewport. The code should work by having me first select the polygon sphere and then running the code. Why did I put that in there? Well, I do know that when it comes to coding, even if I don't have much in the way of coding knowledge, that often when I've run scripts in the past, I have had to select an object that is going to be uh, used by the code in, for, in, in order for the code to understand that that is the object that I want to work with. So I felt that that was probably an important element. Okay, cool, let's see what this gives us now. Copy that new updated code. And let's go in, let's replace it here in the script editor. So I'm gonna delete everything I had and paste that new code in. Control A to select all, Control Enter to run. And did it work? No, um, what did we get? It says, there's a warning here. It says warning. Selected object is not a polygon sphere. Well, that's rather odd, isn't it? It's a polygon sphere as far as I can tell, right? What well, it looks like there. So I would go back now to ChatGPT and say, hey, what's going on? So I basically what I did, when I select my sphere to start with, psphere one, that's the name that I have here in the outliner, uh, and run the script, I received the warning. Selected object is not a polygon sphere. And so ChatGPT gives me um, a likely reason. It's, it says that it's it's checking for a particular name polysphere in the object's history rather than looking for just any sphere in, uh, that might be selected. So now it's gone through. It says, okay, I think I know what the issue is. Here's an updated copy of the code. Okay, cool. Let's try that now. So I still have my sphere selected. Important. Paste the updated code here now and run it. Ah, constrain 46 spheres to locators, confirm. Oh, that's looking a lot better now. All right, cool, that's a, that's a good start. That's the kind of automation that I want. But that is going to find every locator that's in my scene and it's gonna put a sphere on the location of every locator in my scene. And maybe that's not exactly what I want. Maybe I have other locators in my scene that I don't want that to happen to. Or perhaps maybe I just have individual locators that I want to attach spheres to, right? So can I update this script so that it will only affect specific locators? And that's what I ask next, right? This works now. Let's modify the script so that the polygon is constrained only to the locators that are selected. The locators should be selected first and the sphere selected last. Again, I'm just sort of tapping into some you know, inner knowledge that I have about how scripts often work. Usually you have to select a group of things first and the thing that you want to apply to that group of things last. That's just been my experience working with a bunch of code in the past in terms of not even writing the code, but just applying uh, scripts that I've downloaded from the internet. So I'm just kind of working the way that I think it will probably run. So what it's done is it's now giving me a new copy of the code. Cool. So what that requires is that I select my locators first that I want to apply this to. I shift select my sphere last, pop in here, delete that code, put in the new code, run it. Ah, constrain six spheres to selected locators. That's good. Look at that. Cool. And they're all just moving around there as we would expect them to. Well, is there anything else that we can do with this? This script currently works only if the final object selected is a polygon sphere. Well, what if I want this to be a little bit more versatile? Maybe I don't want it to only be a polygon sphere that could work for this. What if instead, whatever the last thing selected is what gets parented to those locators, right? So it can be any kind of object. 
And also, please include notes at the beginning of the script that describe how the script is meant to be used. Now, for instance, if we are looking at the script so far, they just jump right into what the code does. But good coding practice would tell you that you should always have some kind of notes at the beginning of the script that tells the user how they're meant to use the script, including like which things they're supposed to select first, which things they're supposed to select last before they run the, the code. Okay, so um, with that now, copy that, all right? And I'm going to, instead of having a sphere here now, let's put in something that's very obviously different, maybe a spotlight. It's a totally different kind of object. Let's again just select specific locators that we want to attach this to. Select our spotlight last, update our code, put that in there, and run it. Ah, constrain five copies of spotlight to selected locators. And there we go. Now I could have, <laughs> have this guy is just composed of a bunch of spotlights running around. But this right here, just the thinking process behind it is I think very useful in terms of how you could overall take that thinking process and apply it in other scenarios. It's not gonna be the solution to everything because in most situations, you're not gonna be trying to do what I'm doing here, but it is the overall like way of using both ChatGPT and Maya together without the fear of needing to know how to code something. It does require that you are able to see what's working and what's not working. If there are errors that pop up, like in the first example, feed those errors back to ChatGPT. Try to be as um, specific and as coherent as possible in the way that you're writing to ChatGPT, even though, honestly, the um, ChatGPT is really good at figuring out what you're trying to say, even if you're not amazingly eloquent. And you will find that um, maybe the faster or slower, you might, you might hit some bumps in the road. But if you find those bumps, feed it back to ChatGPT. Let it know what's working. Let it know what's not working. And gradually, you will get to a point where the scripts that it's giving you start to become more useful. This might be more difficult for very complex tasks, but for relatively simple points of automation like the one that I just showed you, you should find a pretty high, high degree of reliability through ChatGPT. I hope that's helpful. Good luck.